What's up, everybody? Happy pre-Friday, as we've almost made it through the week. So, on this Throwback Thursday, we are reading the blog post, Intensity. And as always, you are watching a little bit of some training footage. So, the measurable amount of force. If you're just starting on your fitness journey and thinking functional fitness, CrossFit fanatics are insane for their cult-like following, you can't deny they unfailed an aspect of training that has been long lost until recent years. Intensity. If you're thinking to yourself right now, I have no idea what you mean exactly when you say intensity, you're in the right place. I touched briefly on this in the three golden rules of exercise. Check out rule number three if you haven't read that just yet. It's up on the site if you need to. That's a great place to start to get a rudimentary understanding of what intensity is. Now, we'll stay fairly surface level with this concept as it's rooted in physics and that can become cumbersome fairly quick. So buckle up, we're gonna go fast. What the hell does CrossFit have to do with physics? Coaching for a number of years has led me to learn one thing. If more than three people under your watch are doing something incorrectly, it's your fault, not theirs. If you ask 100 people what CrossFit is, I'm sure you'll get 100 different answers. So as your coach for the day, we're going to ensure we can describe what CrossFit is, but more importantly, how we can borrow their widely popularized method of intensity. Once we've done that, we can apply it to any style of training that we like. CrossFit defined itself as constantly varied functional movement executed at high intensity. See, there's that word again. Now, if this is your first time hearing this, you're probably having the same reaction I did. What the fuck does that even mean? Basically, it means do exercises that mimic daily motions or use large portions of the body in as many combinations as possible, as fast as possible. The purpose of doing this is to increase work capacity across broad time and modal domains. Jeez, they're killing it with the jargon here. In normal people speak, the goal of doing a lot of whole body movements in a lot of combinations quickly, or CrossFit, is to increase your ability to accomplish physical tasks in a variety of situations. Whew, why didn't they just say that to begin with? I wish I had an answer for you, but they borrow intensity from physics and it become confusing when explained. But mama didn't raise a quitter, so we're diving into it. Hang in there. When we go to work out, we're accomplishing work. Cleverly named activity there, isn't it? Work is defined as force times distance. So work equals force times distance. Force is synonymous with load. So if you're using a barbell, 45 pounds would be input as your load. Distance is synonymous with repetitions. So every rep you do adds to the distance of the workout. So for simplicity's sake, it can be thought of as work equals loads times reps. Power, also synonymous with intensity, is work divided by time. So power, or intensity, equals work divided by time. This means the more work moving a load over an amount of reps or distance you do in less time, the higher intensity you're maintaining. As an example, let's say Johnny and I are doing squats with 500 pounds. I know, we're really strong. We put a clock on for 60 seconds. He does nine reps, I do seven. He moved the same load a further distance in less time than I did. He had a higher intensity level. Same 60 seconds on the clock, and this time, Johnny and I both do nine reps. However, I used 550 pounds, and he used 500 pounds. Even though we did the same reps, or covered the same distance, in the same time, I used a heavier load, which in turn increased my intensity, or power. Now, last scenario here. Same weight as on the back on the bar, 500 pounds. Johnny and I both do nine reps again. This time it took Johnny 30 seconds and it took me 45 seconds. He accomplished the same work, load times reps, in less time. Therefore, he held a higher intensity. Great, now how the hell do I use this? If you're still fuzzy on this whole thing, check out the short video that is linked in the blog post so you actually have to go and read it yourself but that should point you in the right direction. Hopefully we've caught on to a few ways we can increase our intensity. First, we can increase our load used, like when Johnny and I were using 550 versus 500 pounds. It seems fairly simple and intuitive. If you wanna get stronger, progressively use heavier and heavier weights so the body can adapt to it. 
Only problem I see here is some folks don't know how much weight is too much to use week to week. Too much too soon and the body can't keep up. Too little too late, the body won't change. Another aspect we can manipulate in order to increase intensity would be increasing the distance traveled in a workout or reps. Just like when Johnny did nine reps and I did seven. The more reps we do, the more this adds to our overall work and intensity. However, if I'm not using an adequate load, let's say a toothpick, I can do a thousand reps and the body won't respond in the manner we want. The last and most underrated aspect to be manipulated to our advantage, in my opinion, is time. I can easily up the intensity of a workout by decreasing the time of a workout. Only thing is, my loads and rep can't be sacrificed in an attempt to go faster. That would take away from the overall equation. Just like when Johnny and I both did 9 reps of 500 pounds, except he finished in 30 seconds, and I finished in 45, we arguably are using an adequate load. I pray to God 500 pounds qualifies as adequate. Traveling a distance of 9 reps and are finishing as fast as possible in 30 seconds to 45 seconds. So, in short, intensity allows us to get more work done in less time. This is not only awesome for a time management standpoint, but also from a psychological side. Using the same weights over and over again and not using heavy enough weights won't progress us in the right direction. We want to caution on increasing load though. Too much and we won't make it. Not enough and we'll stay the same. Increasing our overall rep count or distance is a great way to build volume and build up intensity. But if we're using weights that are too light, we fall into the same pitfall again. A thousand reps of a marshmallow curl won't help us, but it sure would be tasty. The number one in my book to get a better workout is to not change either the weight or reps of your current workout routine. I challenge you to keep everything else the same, but go faster. Make sure form doesn't fly out the window. Whatever you're doing now, cut down the rest between movements. Try to speed up the movements. Instead of jogging a mile, run that mile all out. As always, thank you for the read and the listen, and I hope you learned something. Comment with any questions you have and share with a friend who you think would enjoy this. I'll see you guys on the next one.